so I had to put some of it out here. And um, Catherine, you might want to move around to the front because you're not going to see the story from back here because it all happens down in front today. So you're welcome to sit along that first step and you'll have a good view. And this story uh, started about 20 years ago, so it's quite a new story. I mean, it's still before all of you were born, but it was long after all the rest of us were born. Um, and this story began, or this story happened in a country called Pakistan. Have you heard of that country? They've been on television. They have been on television. And this story um, happened not just in Pakistan, but in the high mountains of Pakistan. Not the Rockies. The Rockies are part of, of Canada, but these were the Himalaya, <coughs> Himalayan mountains. Have you heard of those? Very high mountains. And where this story happens was way, way up in the mountains. Um, so far up in the mountains that there was no road to this, to this uh, place where the village uh, is that we're going to talk about. And between the mountains, there was a great river. And it was a very icy cold river because it was fed by the snows of these mountains. So, it's a story about the children of this village. And these children are the children of a village called Corfe. And this was a very, very poor village. They, whoops, it was way, way up in the mountains. The people here had to grow their own food because there was no store. And the children had to make up their own games. And they had to make their own toys because there was no nothing up there. That's their homes. And the only way that they could get from their village to the bigger town was across these mountains. And so they had a rope with a basket on it. And so if someone needed to go into the town, they would get in the basket and the basket would be run across to the other side and they would get out and they would walk down a path for four or five hours down the mountain to the town. That's how far away they were. Well, that's a good question, but I guess this was the only way they could do it, was to have it to another mountain. So, if they, if they needed flour or something like that, it was the same thing, they had to go down, they put it in the basket and bring it back to the village. The children um, loved to learn, but they didn't have pencils or paper. They would take sticks, and they would write 
their lessons in the dirt. So if they were learning how to spell, they would write in the dirt and they'd wipe it out. They had no books, nothing, but they loved to learn. So that's Corfei. And then one day, there was this guy, and he was not from there, he was from the United States. And he was way out here, and he was climbing this big mountain with friends of his, and he got lost. And there had been a blizzard, and all his friends headed one way, and he got lost. He ended up all by himself on this mountain. And he got sick, he fell, he injured his leg, he was in really bad shape, and just as he was close to dying, he ended up um, stumbling into this village of Corfe, and he was not very well. And the people there <coughs> took him to one of their homes, and they covered him in a warm blanket, and they put him next to the best fire so that he would warm up and get well. And it turns out that he was a nurse back in the United States. And so they called him Dr. Greg. And when he got well, he stayed in the village. And he started to help people who were sick in the village. He helped the moms and the dads and the children, anyone who was sick, he would help them to get better. And finally, and he also helped the children with their lessons, with learning um, math and spelling and all of those things, learning how to write English. And finally, he was well enough to head home, but he wanted to do something for these people that had been so nice to him. So he, he was trying to think about what to do, and he, did, he went to the wisest man in the village. His name was Haji Ali, and he said, he said to Haji, I want to do something for you and your people. Um, can you tell me what it is that I could do to help? And Haji Ali looked at him and said, Listen to the wind. And Dr. Greg thought, Well, that's kind of weird. But Haji said again, Listen to the wind. The wind, which is part of the earth, will tell you what you need to do. And so Dr. Greg listened really carefully. He got really quiet and listened to the wind that was coming down the mountains. And in the wind, he heard the children's voices who were learning their lessons. And he said, I know what I can do. I can build them a school so that they don't have to do their lessons outside in the cold. And so he said to the village, I'm going to build you a school. And he got into the basket, and he went over to the other mountain, and down the mountain, and all the way back to the United States. Well, a whole year went by, a year, and finally, he suddenly arrived back at this mountain with all kinds of supplies. He had lumber, he had cement, and he had metal roofing to put a good roof on, but he looked at the basket and said, how are we going to get these over there? That basket won't hold cement, it barely holds a person. And Haji, over on the other side, said, the only thing we can do, we need to build a bridge. And so for the next many months, all the villagers helped, and 
they built a bridge. And so then, with the bridge, they were able to get all of the supplies across the bridge and over into the village in order to build a school. Meanwhile, while that was happening, a lot of other people in the village cut stone out of the mountains for the school's walls. And so they were busy building, getting this big pile of stone while all this bridge was being built, and they could finally start the school. And when they finally got the school finished, they asked Dr. Greg to put the last nail to put the last nail in the roof. And so that's what he did. He went up on the roof and nailed in the last nail and they finished the school. And so everyone, all of the people of the village, all of the children, everyone who had been involved with Dr. Greg came to, to celebrate the opening of this new school. And, whoops, they fell off the mountain. <laughs> and the best thing was, now that there was a bridge, they could have a teacher. And so the teacher came every day from the town and up and into the village and would teach the children in their new school. And so the children said, we are the children of Corfe. We write in Urdu, which was their language, and we write in English. We add and subtract, we read our books and explore our maps, we are learning in the school that we helped build. Can you hear our voices? Just listen to the wind. I don't hear any wind. That's because you have to listen really carefully. I this guy went back to the United States. Actually, he did eventually, and then he built a whole lot of other schools around Pakistan. Well, that's our story. I wonder how it would feel to live in such a poor place in the mountains. Lonely. Lonely. And I wonder how it would feel to have a stranger suddenly come to the village, someone you didn't know. I wonder how that would feel. Strange. Strange. <laughs> kind of wonder what they were like, right? And I wonder how it would feel to finally have a school to learn in. I wonder how that would feel. Her story, and uh, we're going to sing a song now. Um, Spirit, God. Spirit God, be our breath. Spirit God, be our breath, be our song. Because in all of our breath, in all of the wind, uh, that is God that is at work. So let's sing Spirit God, be our breath. And then you can get off to the church.